I always visualize the fight. It's a chess match to me. It's a dangerous game. You can get knocked out. I don't sit there and fixate on it. I focus on my hand being raised at the end of that fight. This journey that I'm on, I describe it one way. Big mouth blazing the trail. Simple as that. What's better than a people's champ? Always get the job done, always fun for the people. Put them both together. It's a hard combination to deal with. The last year and a half, it's been pretty nice. Got some good dubs, took a L, switched weight classes, doing good there. A bunch of shoestrings around the joint, right? Yeah. Some are loose, some are tight, and it's unstable, it's a tug of war, you get yanked out, and then it's like that. It's just been Kevin Holland doing what Kevin Holland does. I guess I move between Trailblazer and Big Mouth just depending on the times and the situation. When it's time to fight, fans want Trailblazer, they get Trailblazer. Fans want Big Mouth, they get Big Mouth. But honestly, the professional that I am these days, I've done a good job of just combining it all. And that's kind of where the newfound success is coming from. We have one complete man. Be very deliberate, Kev, very deliberate. Beautiful, Kevin, beautiful. Go to the center, good. Nice. At this point in time in my career, I would describe it as just the roller coaster. I uh, retired before 30 and uh, back before 31, so <laughs> it's a good time. I really just retired for shits and giggles. I mean, everybody fucking retires. It's not. It really wasn't a big deal. I think the media made it a bigger deal than what it was. The simple fact is. I wanted this fight, and I got this fight, so I'm back. But don't don't get it misconstrued, you know? It's like uh, something wonderful and magnificent didn't step up and pop up. I probably would've stayed in Cabo for a good six months. I'm in a good spot right now. But I wish we could throw out the last one, and just cause last fight was a shit show. Next fighter to the scale, Hamzat Shimaev. 178 and a half. New co-main event at UFC 279, Hamza Chimaev misses weight, no longer in the main event, now in the co-main event against Kevin Holland. Supposed to be Rodriguez. I'm all in for D-Rod, everything's looking great. I'm feeling good. Training for Rodriguez, you know, we're working a lot of jabs, we're working a lot of lead hooks. Skirt! Hit the brakes. We ain't fighting D-Rod, we're fighting a wrestler. I'm a company man. Whatever the company says, that's what this man says too. Kevin, is this a Fuck no, but it's gonna be a fun one. Kevin Holland showed up here expecting to face a striker. Instead, he faces Hamzat Shimaev and all that he brings to the table. Respect Kevin Holland for doing this, because not many people would step up and fight Hamzat Shimaev on a day's notice. I mean, he can do it all. He just doesn't train for this particular fight, but he's a gangster. So, went out there, thought we were gonna have some fun. Well, next thing you know, dude's on my legs, they going for a ride. Furious start to this one as expected. You no, know, it was like a roller coaster, and next thing you know, he's choking me. Holland really wins it now. There's the tap. Comes on Shimaev disposes of Kevin Holland. How good is he? To do that to Kevin Holland is unbelievable. It's jujitsu. Nobody beats me on the feet. It is what it is. Didn't go our way. Catch him on the next one if we get a next one. You play your game. We're fighting your fight. Find your swag, baby. Find yourself. There it is. Cut him off. Smart feet. Smart feet. Mirror image. Yes, sir. That's what I'm talking about. Our next fight up is going to be December 3rd versus uh, Stephen Wonderboy Thompson. I think this is a great matchup. I know the fans love it, but I think people forget that Kevin is an all-around striker. He hits so hard, reach is ridiculous. We're going to see if we can outstrike one of the best strikers in UFC history. 
there's no difficulty in figuring out Wonder Boy's style. He does a lot of wonderful things that come from a karate background. I know how to traditionally strike, that's where I come from. So it be a chance to get back to the roots. I hit harder than Wonder Boy, I'm just as fast as Wonder Boy, and I'm just as slick as Wonder Boy. I'm gonna knock him out, so. It's gonna be a really fucking fun night. And it's a perfect matchup for him as well. Just the same things I think is the same things he think. The difference is, is I hit like a fucking truck, he doesn't. Fighting for the UFC, I've been blessed to be able to travel the world. And there's no place like home. I've been in Simpsonville my entire life. Small town, growing every day, but still has that small town vibe. I love it here. This is where I'm gonna be probably for the rest of my life. Simpsonville is a very special place. Gotta line them up, every place, everything, everything in its place. Living in a martial arts family was pretty exciting, but at the same time, it was pretty rough too. Mr. Ooh, we're doing one of those. Yeah. Me and my brothers and so sisters one, fought two. constantly. Uh, I'm gonna run to the bike over there, Dad. That's gonna be okay. one, wait, one, two, three. If we ever got caught four, fighting, five, my dad would actually make us fight. My dad would move the coffee table out of the way and we would fight until we didn't want to fight anymore. It conditioned us for sure and toughened us up, but uh, taught us that we didn't need to be fighting. Me in the valley, side to side. We'll figure it out up here. You know, here he's my boss. Here he's my coach. And outside of that, he's Pops. I was 12 years old when he took me to my first UFC event. And I told my dad I was gonna do this one day. And he did not let me stray from that goal that I had. Sometimes he winds and pushes back on me as a coach. So I have to bring the dad out some. You know what, your leg might be a little sore. So, you know, we're gonna work around it. We're gonna work through it. You gotta stay on it. My dad started the martial arts almost 50 years ago. He ran a karate school and he had two other jobs to take care of his family and five of us kids. I need the best 30 seconds you got. I was raised in the gym. Well, I'm what you call a dojo rat. I train here, I teach here, I eat here. I literally go home just to sleep. We're from both sides. Yeah. I had my very first fight when I was 15 years old. My dad threw me to the dogs on that one. I fought a guy who was 26 years old. He was 20 and 0. He was undefeated. And uh, here I am, 15 years old, 145 pounds soaking wet. Anyway, I beat the brakes off the guy. And that's actually how I got my nickname, the Wonder Boy. And the announcer called me Wonder Boy, and it stuck with me ever since. Come on, baby, all day. I was actually brought out to Montreal, Canada to fight. Guess who's in my opponent's corner? George St. Pierre and Faraz Ahabi. So I'm like, oh my God, this guy's probably just a monster. Dude. I knocked the dude out in the fifth round. That same day, George St. Pierre and Faraz Ahabi comes up to us and was like, hey, can we get your number? He wanted me to come down and help him with his training camps. And I was like, heck yeah, are you kidding me? The UFC champ, let's go. I found myself doing more jujitsu and wrestling to be a better sparring partner. And I'm like, I definitely need to be switching to MMA. Looking good, looking good. In 2010, I had my very first MMA fight. 2012, the UFC called. Yeah. And uh, here I am. Steven Wonderboy Thompson set to make his UFC debut. Oh, that's a wrap. Oh, caught him again. Oh, again. He oh, that wrapped him. Big right here. I went on a seven fight winning streak. Another ridiculous highlight. This is Steven Wonderboy Jackson. And that got me Tyron Woodley. 13 and one as a professional looking to leave as the new champ. UFC 205, Madison Square Garden. One of the most epic fights. In the fourth round, he ends up knocking me down. Oh, oh big time right hand. Hits me with the right hand. Boom. Oh, he oh, hurt him again. 
goodness! The Whippy's tagging him. Next thing you know, oh! I'm in like a deep guillotine. Oh man, that is so tight. How is Wonder Boy surviving here? He's gonna tap. In the moment, I literally said, all these people came to watch me fight. I'm not gonna tap. His head is free. And as soon as my head popped out, the whole arena erupted. What a round! Something that I will remember for the rest of my life. So many epic fights. You're gonna add this one to it. Yes, I fight for the honor and the glory, but I also want to put on a good show. The winner by split decision and still! We ended up getting a rematch. But he ended up winning it. So I had to go back to the drawing board. What are we gonna watch? Let's watch his uh Kadir. His oh uh, yeah, Kadir. Oh Kadir. yeah, yeah, yeah. We gotta, yeah, go, yeah, we gotta yeah. go old school kickboxing. WB is so old <laughs> that that's a VHS tape. It's got Still film works. in it. What year is that? 2005. Been doing this since I was 15 years old, and I'll be 40 in February. It doesn't sound right in there, guys. I love it. I, I love to compete. It's kind of hard to stop. No, oh, bro. Oh no. oh, no. Nag, nab it. That's, that's the go-to curse word down here. Oh, there we go. There we go. <laughs> this is embarrassing. Lead leg, boom. Oh, oh look at man, that I faked the round kick. Shuffle one, two, dude. Oh, 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 yeah. Come on, Steve. Get that front hand. Yeah, we put on some killer fights, man. This place, yeah, this place would be packed. Some of the best times, man. Oh, man. We were high rollers, bro. Oh, my leg about gave out on that one, too. Did you see that? Not a whole lot of people get to fight for the title. I fought for it twice, and I didn't get it. I know I'm two or three fights away from getting another title shot. I know there's a murderer's row in front of me. That's why I love this game, because of the chess match. December 3rd, 3rd, main event against Kevin Holland. This guy is a killer. He's a great striker, probably one of the best. When you're up there in the big leagues, the proving grounds, you can't drop your guard for an instant because they will seize the opportunity. When you watch this guy fight, he gets better. And that's a scary guy. And I gotta be able to adapt to that mid-fight. Kevin's gonna know who the better striker is, that my hand's gonna be raised at the end of this fight, that I'm gonna go for the title. Check, check. What's good? What's going on? Real Eyes Recognized podcast, episode number six. The man, the myth, the legend, but it's all legend over here with Kevin Trailblaze Holland. Big mouth. Yeah, big mouth. Yeah, big, big mouth. mouth today. Main event, December 3rd. How's the training camp going? Man, it's actually going great. Um, Kevin's really turned, I, I think, a corner. If we continue in this direction, you know, anything can happen in, in a fight, of course, yeah. but I think he's going to be the most mentally and, and physically prepared that, that he's ever been. Bob Perez, badass striking coach, hell of a man. He just makes me better by just simply bringing his energy and bringing his knowledge. He has a world-class knowledge when it comes to uh, striking and great knowledge when it comes to MMA. Fighting is 100% an individual sport. It, the, like other end of the token, it's a team sport. Kevin cannot be where he's at. None of these men and women could be at the highest level of their profession without a team. Before my career, I was having a lot of different voices and I wasn't exactly sure who to listen to on fight night. And uh, with Bob, you know, he has a good mix of knowledge. He lets everybody talk, but the way he puts things in order, it allows me to understand, you know, that he's leading it to the right way. Kevin's really turned, I, I think, a corner, you know, just as a, as a man and as a, as a fighter in regards to professionalism. It's not just you're fighting another fighter, it's kind of man versus himself. Yeah. And I really see him having this clarity right uh, right now, this kind of like light bulb or epiphany moment where he's like, man, I have to hit this corner and, he, and, he, and he's doing it. Times were changing in my life and I decided I really wanted to give this a go. So to be professional, you have to do the professional thing. So I went from 185 to 170 pounds. Kevin Holland's got the chance to be a superstar. The man loves to fight. At 170, this is his correct weight class. 
with Oliveira. I wanted to find a way for the right hand to touch him just a little bit. Bow! Right hand to the dome. Oh! oh! Massive right hand. Kevin rocked him. That'll do it. Holland blazing his trail at welterweight. And then we smacked down for Tim Means. I was firing on all cylinders. And ultimately, it led it to him getting rocked by the right hand once again. Big right has Means wobbled. Holland has him down. There's the tap! Good. One, two, slip two. Hop, boom. A little more chop. Hop, boom. There it is. One, two, slip two, three, two. Hop, 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 hop. Follow up. Ah, yes, sir. Faster. Definitely enjoy 170 pounds because I'm in shape at 170 pounds. I enjoy being in shape. I enjoy going out there and knowing that I'm not going to gas out. You know, you see me asking for five rounds now because uh, your boy just don't get tired like he used to. Five, two, three, two. It's the right weight for him. He became more structured himself, I think, once we made this decision. His nutrition, his workouts, everything he started taking, I think, more seriously. That's and man, I think it, it, you know the dividends are, are paying off for sure. It's very exciting to go against somebody with a traditional background. Five rounds to work with one of the best strikers in the world. I oblige 100%. Five rounds to work with one of the best grapplers in the world. I oblige 100%. Sometimes you get guys that know how to bang a good roundhouse kick at the right time, throw some good punches, but you ain't got Wonder Boy. He can spin with the kick. He can jump in the air and throw a strike. His punches are clean. But uh, when I get in front of him, we'll find out if it's really that puzzle that everybody says it is, or if it's just simple, the fact that they don't know how to traditionally strike. We'll see who is more effective. Uh, I think he'll be the more pretty one, but uh, I'll be the more effective one. It's gonna be a fun night, because when I put the right hand on him, no matter what he does, my right hand is gonna make a difference in this fight every single time, and I know that. Let's go out there and work it. Gonna pick up some youngins today. Here I am fighting for the UFC and, you know, fought for the title many times. She's alive. But I'm just a regular guy who just loves to fight. I'm driving the party school bus every day, teaching kids classes. So we have five buses, and we all go to, like, three or four different schools. What's up, Jasper, Casper? Hello. And Sarah Bear, come on in. Let's see, Sarah, check. Jasper, check. What's up, Cooper? This is my real job. I fight for the fun of it. What's up, Christian? Oh, Seatbelt on. This person has two evil stepsisters and a stepmom. Cinderella. Cinderella. I would say I'm the most popular. I think the least popular is probably my dad. Sit down, put your seatbelt on. What movie is this off of? Mas a baby, as a baby. Oh, see Ah, okay. My real job is changing people's lives through the martial arts. Everybody, right side. Up. Yeah. Yeah. I know what it's done for me and to give that back to them. It's awesome. Back it not only changes them, but it also changes the community. He's passing you, Chad. Don't let him do that to you, man. And imagine what we can do with an amazing community, how much better everything can be. My dad always told me, people don't really care how much you know. They only want to know how much you care. I'm gonna grab a partner. Here we go. When you get a chance to go get inside on that body with them hands. Get inside on that body with them hands. The biggest mistake Kevin can make is taking me lightly. Do your jab. People are like, oh, he's done. Steven Thompson's done. He's too old. He can't do it anymore. Are you kidding me? No. Come on, one of the boys. I'm 39 years old, and I'm still learning every day. Come on, let's go. Come on. I'm not the best. Let's go. Yes. That go. mindset kept me hungry and ah. always coming to the gym with an empty cup. Come on, big T. Man, I'll do this as long as my body will let me. Or when my dad says I'm done.
He knows me more than I know myself at this point. You know, my dad fought, my sister fought, most of my siblings have fought. Legacy is kind of important to me. When I'm like 80 and I look back on it, I'm just like, bro, this, is, this has been the greatest life ever. In a sport that is just so hard, there's nobody else to blame but you. All eyes are on you. If I go out there and I win over Kevin Holland, I move up the rankings or I fight somebody higher than me, I'm two fights away from a title fight. That's the ultimate goal, is to be the best. If you're not focused on being the best, you shouldn't be out there. So, we gotta go out there and win this fight. I never felt invincible. Invincible is a recipe for a person who doesn't want to put in any work and a person that wants to eventually fail. You feel invincible, come hang out with me for a day. Guarantee you're not going to dodge every shot. And once you feel wonderful, you won't feel invincible. When you step in that octagon and they close it, there's no more thinking. It's just reaction. I understand why I'm there. I was meant for this. And guess what? I'm still here, baby. I've got a lot left in me, man. You ain't seen the last of Steve Wonderboy Thompson.